What is up, fam? IG Wet Shavers. What's going on, everyone? It's 6 p.m. Arizona time. That means it's time for Shave Line MBD. I'm stoked to be there tonight. We have a active duty airman coming in from Turkey this evening. It's 4 o'clock his time. God bless him for showing up for, this sh for our show. It's awesome. Bath Beach, what up, man? Cutthroat Mike, what's going on? Uh, the soap thing, there he is. Staxi, what up, bro? I'm gonna bring you in, soap thing. Um, let's see here. Got it. I think we got it. What's up, Shave on Gents? How are you? Hey, what's up, bro? Hey, how we doing? Thanks for Good. having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah, it's four o'clock over there, right? Yeah, 0400. I uh, I just got up like um, about 45 minutes ago. Okay, so you just got up a little bit ago. Good morning to you. Thanks. How's it going over there? It's uh, yesterday at what, uh, 1900, something like that? Yeah, 6 p.m. here, 9 over where Ray at, is at. Ray uh, uh, Benjamin, correct? Yes. Uh, Ray Benjamin, Benjamin Ray. Um, yes. Um, Actually, Rain, um, I'm going blank. What the fuck? Uh, Andy will not be doing a live shape tonight, but it'll be us three. He might join us anyways because I told him just come on in, hang out, see what's going on. Uh, the real doors quick, open. Our sponsors, and then we'll get started. I want to thank everybody that's many is here right now. Um, appreciate you, each and every one of you. I'd like to thank uh, Arc Light Candles. We're good at I have my I have my Goonies shirt on. Nice. Can't go wrong with the Goonies. Go check Goonies out. Never die. Goonies operated by our illustrious Razor Ray, and um, go check him out. He got some cool drops that happened over the summer, and uh, get yourself a badass candle. He's got some other cool stuff that's got dupes and all kinds of fun things that he's created. Um, also, like to thank uh, Strike Gold Shaves. Frank is giving away um, a pomade tonight. It's Uncle Jumbo pomade, so you have a chance to win. Palmade, which is also can be substituted as a beard balm or a mustache wax as well. I'd like to thank uh, Alien Shaves. If you go to alienshaves.com at checkout at the discount bar, all is capital letters, Shave Line MBD number 20, you get 20% off your total discount. Also, like to thank Wet Shaving Store. And if you go check out the Wet Shaving Store, you can still pick up Luna and Soul. It's still available. And keep an eye out for M. It'll be exclusive to the Wet Shaving Store. You'll be uh, able to access the soap, the Splash by Elysian uh, Soaps, and the EDP by me. Last but not least, Governor Riley over there at First Line Shaves. Go check out Crossroads. Great product. All the stuff that he does is just a banger. Go check him out. Give him some love. Okay, that's it. That's it, everybody. Yeah, I thought I heard of uh, Uncle Jumbo before. That's uh, the um, Layton whis whi whiskey distillery. Isn't oh, it? and is it a Layton Duke? Yeah, it's Layton. Layton Duke. Because we did the uh, we did the Uncle Jumbo candles. Right, right, right. That's right. right. Oh, right. such a good scent. Such a good scent. That's a great scent. You know what I mean? Like that is really good scent. Um, so what what? what what kind of scent is it? Is it a, um, a whiskey scent? Because uh, when I think of Uncle Jumbo, that's what I'm getting reminded of is the, uh, the whiskey. Uh, it's it's like a fall fragrance. I'd say like woody, um, I think a little fresh. My wife described it as Christmas in a bottle. But I didn't. Really, I don't really. I, I don't really get that from it. But yeah, it's 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 woody, fresh. It's very mass appealing. It, it's probably one of Parfums de Marley's. Uh, easiest approachable fragrance. Oh, it's a PDM scent. That's interesting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. We, so, when, when you type in Un Uncle Jumbo into Google, the first thing that comes up is Uncle Jumbo's is distillery. <laughs> <laughs> so. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that at all. So, uh, you know what's really cool, Benjamin, is that you're stationed at the, at the same place my father was when he was uh, done with his duties making his way back here to Arizona. I think that's really yeah, cool. 
you told me about that. That's crazy. It's it's a small world. Yeah, yeah, really small. It was funny because he went from the UK to Turkey, then to Germany, and then from Germany he went to North Africa. So he went from wearing wool to where the other airmen grabbed him and were like, "You got to get out of those clothes, man. You're going to die here." And then from there yeah. he went to uh, McKin Mackinac, Texas. It's like on the south point of Texas. He went there and then came home back to Arizona. But uh, yeah, when you told me you were there, I was like, that was my dad was stationed there, you know? Yeah, it, it's interesting. Uh, there's a lot of, who knows how many, over 100 Air Force bases alone that between 1988 and 1995 were closed down because of the, the fall of the wall. And so I hear a lot of... Uh, Older people say, well, I was stationed here or there, or my friends or my parents were stationed here or there, and it's like that base doesn't even exist anymore, and it's kind of it's kind of sad, really, because like uh, my home state of Michigan at one point had four Air Force bases, and now it doesn't have any. They're all shut right. down. Very true. So it, it's crazy how like the, the, the BRAC, they call it, the Base Realignment Enclosure, they just shut down so many. We only have bases. two now. We used to have a lot. We have yeah. one in West Phoenix, and we have one in South Tucson, Sierra Vista almost area. We only have yeah, two Tucson. in I was in Fort Lewis, and they joined the with the, the Air Force Base there, so now it's Joint Base Lewis-McChord. So yeah, I, yeah I, I, JBLM. I, yeah, okay. so that's a so jumble mess. Um, uh, tell I've us been, about your, been... um, your beginnings in getting into the luxury shaving uh, community and the hobby. By the way, we're changing the name from wet shaving to luxury shaving because there's just too many beautiful fragrances out there for us to play with. It makes uh, you for, feel luxurious. Yeah. It does. It right? does. I will give you that. So for me, I, in around about uh, spring of 2017, uh, I finally decided I'm sick of these cartridge razors, not, not because they were giving me a bad shave, but because I'm military, so I have to shave every day. Yeah. So this stuff was getting expensive and I'm actually one of those guys that I spent from 2017 for several years. I spent quite a while where I actually did have only one or two razors, uh, a couple, two or three soaps and a couple of brushes. And I was saving a crap ton of money. Like you can do it. This does not have to be a hobby if you don't want it to be, if you're trying to, uh, to pinch pennies and keep costs low. Uh, the irony is not lost on us. You can do it. It doesn't have to be turned into this wild hobby where you have like 130 soaps like I do and like 60 something aftershaves. It, it doesn't have to be that way. That's me. <laughs> so Guilty. I did, I did that for quite a few years. And then I, uh, around about 2019, early 2020, it just exploded. Like right. I finally, uh, and what happened was I traded one hobby for another. So, and the hobby that I, that I more or less gave up was more expensive than this one. So I'm actually, so you're winning. Spent, I'm, I'm still winning. Yeah. Uh, and then I don't know if you heard of Don Youngner over at wet the face. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. So, uh, he has his own line of shaving products, but if you send him something, pretty much anything, he'll promptly do a review on it just to put some variety into his channel. And so I was sending him all sorts of stuff, soaps, razors, uh, things like that. And after doing it for a while, he finally half jokingly said, well, why don't you just start your own YouTube channel? So I was like, okay, I guess, I guess I'll go do that then. And so I chewed over do I really want to do this? And finally I said, okay, well, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it right. So I got a relatively expensive camera. I don't use my phone for my shave videos. And I, um, I did a bunch of demos. So like, if you go all the way down to the bottom of the list, all my shaves in my, on my YouTube channel are numbered numerically before shave, shave number one ever went live. I did something like 45 demos where I would record wow. it and, and then like watch it. And it's like, okay, I want to put this piece of dialogue in this place. And I want to move this over here. And well, that 
transition didn't flow very well. So let's, let's not do that. And it was a lot of trial and error because when I, I said, if I'm going to do this, I want, when video number one comes out, I want to be just like ready to go. Like there's obviously going to be evolution as time goes by, but I don't want to be this, this hot mess when I start my first uh, shave video. And so that's how the, the format got started. And then the uh, soap thing as like a, a theme actually came from my, uh, an argument that I had with my wife. It was one of those uh, where it was just a screaming match. Like we have a, a phenomenal relationship, but every once in a while you got to air your grievances. <laughs> so, and she made, I w she was in the process of like kit cleaning the kitchen countertops. And I had one of those uh, shaving soap display stands that I kind of just walked by and set it down. <laughs> she was like, you get that effing soap thing, soap thing off of my counter so that I can clean it. And I held up my, my finger like this, like I was getting ready to say something. And then a light bulb went off inside my head. I was like, I got an idea. And so I did an about face and walked away. And it's one of those funny things where she was like, Hey, where are you going? I'm not, I'm not done arguing with you. And I'm like, yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Because when somebody's trying to lay into you and you just walk away like, yeah, whatever, that's like the worst thing you can possibly do. <laughs> right. You know, it's funny because when I, when I saw the name, the soap thing, it, it took me to a, like, 1940s, 1950s monster movie. Right. That, that, that's kind of what it like was. Like Preacher right? of the Black Lagoon. That's what soap right. thing triggered, actually. Yeah, so there, there's there's two different things going on with that. Uh, more or less, uh, what it is is creature from the Black Lagoon, whereas Soap Thing is a play on Swamp Thing, yeah, which was a m much later comic book series. Yep. And uh, excuse me, when I was in high school, I was lucky enough that we had a trade school you can go to so you go to regular classes like your math and your history classes in the uh in the morning this was your your last two years of high school and in the in the afternoon you could get on a bus and go to this other location where they had like construction trades uh machining school and a bunch of other ones and i went to marketing school okay which uh, in hindsight i wish i had done something else because i ended up kind of blowing it off it just wasn't for me i was mediocre at it at best so but by the time the soap thing project came around i i knew that i uh, marketing and like um your brand logo and your name like that matters okay oh, yeah. so instead of instead of just calling it ben shaves or something like that not not to disrespect anybody that does that but I was like, it, it needs to be catchy and it needs to be done right the first time because rebranding can destroy your channel at the very least set you back quite a bit. So, oh yeah. I mean that, that occurs in any facet, by the way, Benjamin, like it, like, you know, like I'm, I'm smiles for miles. Right. And then all of a sudden I changed my, not my name, my business name, which is part of my middle name. Well, the point being, if I change my business name, that can cause damage. You know what I mean? You got it's like a really a hard thing to to change in the middle of what you're doing. So I understand that completely. Right. So uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, and all of your tags they don't transfer over if you change names. I think because you're if you're hashtag whatever or at something that doesn't it doesn't translate once you change your account too. I didn't know that. Yeah. So I wanted I wanted something that was going to work well from the very beginning. So I. Uh, by by the time this this came around, I had uh, I, I didn't have the I no longer had the tools nor the skill to do graphic design on my own. So I hired a graphic designer on Etsy named uh, Nelly Lutzwolf, who is just a phenomenal graphic designer, and she doesn't charge that much. She's not at all related to the uh, wet shaving community and has no desire to be, but she's a phenomenal graphic designer, and she put together that for me and, and the, the color scheme that we had going on actually came from a 1956 issue of life magazine that had kind of a swampy 
um, environment backdrop on the cover. And I was like, well, let's take these colors and, and work with that. And it just kind of snowballed from there. Very cool. And uh, and then Shave Number One came out, and the rest is is in the books. Yeah, Ray, you got any questions for Benjamin? Uh, I know we I know you were talking about making your own soap before, and uh, we did a we worked on a label, but we did we did work on a label. Uh, sadly, the artisan that I was working with lost interest in the project. So uh, that was unfortunate. And then I talked to a couple uh, other artisans and pitched the idea to them and nobody likes sloppy seconds. And so the, uh, the idea that I had is basically dead on arrival, unfortunately. Yeah. And that's that happened more happen. than once. Uh, yeah. Like I've, I've had multiple artisans uh, express interest in collaborating and then they just kind of quietly go away. Like right. uh, no, nobody likes to talk about that, but that, that, those are kind of some of the things that happen behind the scenes, like what people set out to do and what they actually accomplish sometimes are two different things. Not always, but sometimes. Right. Yeah. It's not feasible for you to make it cause you're, you know, moving around and yeah, yeah you're in the military. I wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. You're in the military. Like there's really no option or time. Um, what fragrance were you thinking about when you were looking to do this? Uh, it was going to be a cypress uh, fragrance. I wanted it, I wanted it to be an original scent. Um, because I like I like uh, fragrance dupes as much as the next guy, but uh, I have my opinion of shaving soap fragrances has evolved to where. I have a lot more respect for um, very good scents that are original than I do for very good scents that are a, a fragrance too. Because if it's an original scent, that's a lot more trial and error. That's a lot more work that has to go into it. Uh, I'm not saying that uh, that uh, doing a fragrance dupe is no work because you still got to find a uh, a fragrant a pre blend that works for your soap base and it's got to anchor to it and stay there. So there's a lot of work that goes into that, but if you're making a new scent, even if it's just like sandalwood and amber, uh, that takes that takes a while to get the mixture right. Yeah, so, I mean when we did uh, Luna and Soul, yeah, there there was idealisms and jumping off points of what we were going to do with it, but it wasn't a they weren't dupes; they're literally originals. And then when I made the EDPs, those were originals as well. So yeah, I, I'm the same way. I like both. You know, I have no problems with dupes. We just came out with Shayla and MBD, second soap with uh, Strike Gold, and you know, it's a great fragrance. It's a dupe. I have no, I have no problems. But I like doing. We like doing originals too. You know, I appreciate originals. There's a lot of thought that goes behind it. You know, um, you know, we're working on an M right now, and that's a whole original fragrance that I designed, and that's going to become a soap and a splash, and then. Our holiday is going to be original too. So we're, you know, the big four, we're working towards more of doing original original fragrances than doing dupes. You know what I mean? But nothing wrong with dupe. I have no issues with dupes. I like dupes. Last year, I, I, think, there's le I think there's less of a risk when it comes to dupes because the person is not, not much of a blind bag because someone can, can either have smelled it before or they can get a sample of that scent. They can go to like Sephora, smell it if it's like a popular fragrance. And right. then I think, and I am CDB, I think he said it right. Like I'd rather pay for a good dupe versus a bad original. Like, cause some originals, you know. Well, I, uh, I would, I would agree with that. I mean, uh, fragrance dupes are a necessary thing uh, in this hobby. And I've got plenty of them. Uh, but if I'm going to, if if you give me a binary proposition and you say you can take you can either take a very very good original scent or a very very good fragrance dupe i am probably going to take a very very good original scent 10 out of 10 times like uh, right but right. but ab absolutely given the option of either a bad original or a good fragrance dupe then i'll, I'll pick a fragrance dupe like uh, at the end of the day all i care about is does it does it smell good? Uh, philosophically, I would prefer if a lot of artisans uh, did more heavy lifting because I'm, I, I'm honestly worried about where this is going. 
because you see so many fragrance dupes coming out so often that I worry that the uh, the skill and trade of creating your own new scents is going to slowly disappear. I mean, that, that's probably unfounded, but it, I do worry about that less and less people are going to, are going to stick their nose out and try to do something that, that came from them basically. Right. And, and I do agree with Ray, you know, it is a safety net to do a dupe. You know what I mean? Because like CDB, there's no, there's people out there like him that would rather go for a dupe than an original. But then there's people like you and me and Ray, we're pretty open to originals. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to try, I want to check it out. You know, my big influence for me was so is a base. Like, I love certain bases. And if I can get an original fragrance on top, like, it's, mm -hmm. it's a banger in my head. You know, like, I like Shannon Soap. She does a great job on her right. soaps. And she does a lot of original stuff with Elysian. And I think the majority of what she does is, I think actually all of it, she does original. Isn't that right, Ray? Is that? Oh, he's talking. Um, but I believe she does all original. You know what I mean? But I love Strike Gold Shades bass. It's a banger. And Strike... You know, Frank does great dupes, too. So, you know, I'm on, I do both sides. I ride both sides of the coin. But I do like an original. I do. I really right. do. Because I, I, I think I, it's, Go ahead. Yeah, I, I think it should be a good, healthy mix of both. You know, like... Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't lean to, uh, heavily on one or the other. I think it's good to have a mix. Yeah. Because someone, yeah. someone who might not have tried your, your soap because of, you know, they don't know your sense might pick up one of your the dupe ones and like hey this base is really good and then they might want to check out some of your other stuff i mean it, it's i think a, mix, a good mix of both is, is is preferable i like it that way too because you know strike gold has done originals he's done dupes love the base you know what i mean like i i agree with that i'm, I'm i i will go both sides of the coin right but i appreciate right. when it's an original fragrance and soap because there's a lot of work involved. I know because we just got done doing Luna and Soul, and now we're working on him. So there's a lot of la love of labor going on in the background when you're doing original stuff. But, again, I like I like the Sundays fragrance we got, you know. I like the Calvin Klein Obsession we got, you know. Like, I like, you know, I like the dupes as well. So there's... Obs I mean, obsession is good stuff. That stuff never gets old. Yeah, yeah, um, love, love obsession. We got a question real quick. Um, enable uh, Shooter gonna... Ben, which one razor brush soap set do you miss the most from your den in the U.S.? Good question. So, which razor soap and brush? Um, as far as uh, shaving soaps, I uh... oh boy. I'm a big Murphy and McNeil fan, uh, just because uh, of the elegant simplicity. Like I have, a, I'm surrounded by examples of stuff that I figured we might talk about, and one of them is is this Murphy and McNeil. I mean, just look at the elegant simplicity that they do with their with their marketing. So, and their their Aeon base is phenomenal stuff. And so there's a bunch of there's a bunch of scents. If I had to pick one. Oh goodness, my um, Mogchard, the uh, yeah. Tom Ford Oud Wood dupe, because yeah. uh, that that one is it's it's one of those things where I just got done saying I would prefer a good original scent, but having said that, my God, did Murphy and McNeil do a phenomenal job with Mogchard? That that is so close you know, to Tom Ford Oud Wood, it's scary. They did a great, their Dia de los Muertos drop they did last year. Those are two original fragrances and amazing. Like, they're really great. You know, the base is good, the fragrance, the frags, you know, everything was great. Nothing, nothing, to, I like Murphy and McNeil's stuff too. You know, like, I really do appreciate what they do as well. Yeah, um, yeah. I, have, I have a lucky number six dupe. It's a Liz Claiborne fragrance. That was like my original OG fragrance that I ever bought. So the fact that he like he's like the only thing, only one that makes that dupe. It's 
That, that, I think that's the best part about a dupe is when you have the, the, the dupes that no one's done before, especially if it's something that it ties to something in your past. You're like, oh, yeah, that. And you yeah. get that one, one person that does it. You're like, all right, that strikes a chord with me. Yeah. Um, you know, Cause everyone, everyone, like, everyone's, every, everyone's doing Aventus. As yeah. Someone pointed out everyone's doing Sauvage, but it's like, there's always, there's so many great fragrances that don't even get touched. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, you guys, so that, if you like Oud, you got to check out Illustrious Oud by First Line Chase. Like, I'm not trying to talk smack or disparage anybody, but it's, I believe my IMO is better than Pete's from HCNC. So check out Illustrious Oud and get your hot hands on it. You like Oud? It's a banger. I love it. Um, so banger and a half. The the only the, the only thing that's stopping me from getting illustrious oud is the fact that I can't get. It's one of those where I would have to get the splash, and I can't get it over here because of shipping restrictions. Like one of the things, like I don't know if you've been watching my channel, but I have the chosen twelve, which is the the twelve shaving soap and aftershave combinations that I brought with me on the plane. Everything else was bought when I got here. Uh. And it's one of those things where I won't get illustrious suit unless I can get the aftershave and I can't get the aftershave because it has alcohol in it and you can't ship alcohol products over here. It, it sucks right. because I've been craving some sterling aftershaves and I can't get those either. Um, but I'm going to try to answer that question real quick. So I'm sure there's uh, there's stuff I'm, I'm going to come out of this episode and then think, Oh, I wish I'd mentioned that. But for the soap, probably uh mod churd from Murphy and McNeil. Um, I have a Wolf Whiskers brush that is called uh, Evergreen Abyss, and it's one of his, Peter Wolf's color themes. Well, it was a custom brush when I uh, uh, ordered it, and he liked the color so much that he made it a standard color offering. And so I have the first one of the uh, of the Evergreen Abyss brushes, and then, and then for probably a razor that I, that I missed the most. Honestly, I, I cannot believe that I didn't bring my Lupo 72 from Razor Rock. Right. Like what, I don't, I don't know what the heck was I thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, miss, I, I miss that razor so much right now. Right. But I chose razors to bring with me that were utilitarian rather than bringing stuff I liked. And that was a lesson learned. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that's like me with my Staley Live. Like, you know, I got it when I'm planning on moving, and I know me. So if I don't write myself a note, I'm going to pack it away, and then I'm fucked. So I got to, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to forget to make sure I put that in my little shaving bag I have. Ray, I found my dad's travel bag from the 1950s. So bad. So I got to remember to put that in there. So I don't forget, you know what I mean? I, th I think they call them dop kits. I've yeah. heard that term yeah. going around a lot, dop kits. Yeah, dop kits. If it's another um, one, it'll probably last forever. Yeah, it's old. Uh, ben, I'd love to have Chessel and Hound on here. It's a matter of him wanting to be on here. So, uh, you know, I always try to get brush makers on, but because I'm a brush maker, they don't want to come on. But I'd like to have him on here, you know, or his dad. I like his dad, too. Um, it's, pro it's probably me. I'm very, I'm very controversial. Kinda... It, it probably okay. is. You're, you're just yeah. so mean and loud wow. and obnoxious. The and worst. Rude. In, in all yeah. seriousness, uh, that's kind of kind of a cop out and immature. The the fact that other brush makers won't talk with other brush makers. I'm like oh, that's outrageous. Like I get that it's your job to make money off of selling your product, but to to just cut yourself off like that, like. I'm sorry. I'm just going to say how I feel. That's ridiculous. Right. That the, the brush makers won't come on the show just to talk. Like, if nothing else, just to shamelessly plug themselves. Like, right. I I have I no problems with any of that. You know what I mean? Like, but it is what it is. I'm not worried about it. Anyway. Yeah. You know. Like. Go ahead, Ray. I like. I love looking at everybody else's label art and stuff like alien shave just posted a picture of like their i think a 20 uh, their anniversary one yeah phenomenal I yeah love it. yeah like people who like 
that would be like if I were to say, and I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't even look at other, other labels. I won't buy anything that I didn't design. Like that's, it's crazy. You're closing yourself yeah. off from an entire You're world of possibilities. You're isolating from what else is out there, you know, right? And it's like, I, you know, I'm a brush maker, but I'm also a frag designer now. And I have no issues with anybody. Like, I'm just doing my gig and having fun. You know what I mean? Like, but I'll get one on sooner or later. I'd love to have Bobby Moffat on, actually, from Sawdust. He's such a great guy, you know. Um, but, yeah, it'll happen. One of these days, it'll happen. Um, Ray, you got any questions have you, for Benjamin? Have you talked to Bobby Mo about it? No, I'm going to. I just thought about it. Oh, okay, because – I've worked with him on a couple of the first line shaves projects. So I could, I could mention it. I could put a feeler out for you. Yeah. Do that. Do that. Ask him. If he wants to be on. Cause I'd love to have him on. He's a great guy. Um, yeah. He's awesome. Yeah. I actually we're doing actually, uh, go ahead, Benjamin. I actually have a question for smiley. Uh, you, you're doing fragrances now, right? Yes, sir. So, uh, we've all seen these, uh, these designer and niche fragrances that are, 100 200 even 300 for 100 milliliter bottles uh how much of that is um the quality of the product and research and development and how much of it is just name recognition like they know you're going to pay for it because it's it's creed or it's because it's dior like how well much i'm not that at that level benjamin like i can't just throw something out there like you know creed you know what i mean like i'm not at that level right. and there is fragrance designers that are at that level that do that they'll just put it together and poof, they're going to buy it. It doesn't matter. Poof. You know, for me, right. there's a lot of thought, a lot of process, a lot of research. You know, I've got to come up with the idea first. That's the first, the first step moving forward. You know, with like Elixir L, you know, I had an idea I wanted to do and it didn't work out how I wanted it to work out, but the fragrance still came out bomb. It's still an amazing fragrance. You know, like right. everybody that's gotten their hands on it loves it. And, but it didn't come out where I wanted it to go because there was two, some preliminaries that didn't work out. So yeah. now, like, you know, when I'm thinking about fall, you know, I'm thinking from an artist's point of view, you know, I'm a sculptor, I'm a potter, I'm a painter, I'm all these things I've done. And so when I'm making a fragrance, it's coming more from like the way I think about a painting, you know, like it just pops up. So with my fall, I'm doing something about Jackson Pollock, one of my favorite, you know, turn of the century abstract artists out there, surrealistic abstract artists, if you will. And, you know, and that's how I, we come up, come up with things. Now with Luna and Soul, when I designed those fragrances, we had a powwow. The big four, we all got together in the background. We talked about what we were looking for. And then whatever Shannon did was my jumping off point to create the EDPs to complement that fragrance. You know what I mean? So that way, right. that, there's a lot of thought process for me. Now, I can't speak for other frag designers, but for me, there's a lot of thought, a lot of research. You know, when you first even start, when I first did my first fragrance, M, it was a year of research, a year of looking at things, hear, listening to people. My brother Ray was a big influence right there, you know, like, so there was a jumping off point for me there. And then, you know, Chef Mo would send me fistfuls of decants, and me being, uh, a nerd, I looked up all the notes to every decan that I got. You know, right. I got my dad's vintage collection of fragrances. I looked up all the notes to every fragrance that was in his collection. And I have a little book now, a little a little diary of fragrance notes that I reference when I'm thinking about something. You know what I mean? But then right. there's other points where I'll talk to Leroy from Zahara Up Down Under. And he's so deep in the fragrance. Like, the man can pick things out of just smelling things. You know what I mean? So he's been giving me more of an education. And then, of course, George Zaharoff and Frank from Strykel, those are my brothers. Those are the guys that influenced me as well. So for me, Benjamin, there's a lot of thought going behind what I'm designing. Now, as far as quality of oils, essentials, I use naturals. So, of course, the price tag reflects that, too. You know what I mean? Right. Especially with M. M is designed in a professional studio. It's not my studio. I have my studio. It's right there. You know, it's right 
right behind here. And but it's just a little organ, little rag oil or organ where I look at all my essentials. When I go do M, I go to an actual fragrance house and get in their studio and design. But I can only do that with them. I can't do that with any others. So there's your answer from my point, my perspective. Yeah, it's amazing. Like I didn't think about that until you mentioned it. But uh, soap makers and uh, fragrance designers like you, the the amount of money that gets I don't want to say thrown away, but but poured into stuff that doesn't go well, like scents that won't anchor to soaps or fragrances that that smell great on paper, and then when you put them, you know, try to put them together, it's like, whoa, what happened to this? And yeah. the amount of stuff that people just throw away to to, to get to from point A to point B, it, it's craziness. Well, I got just, I got it's a, it's I got the same way with candles too. Yeah, I was just going to say, Ray probably goes through that as well. I got blends that will never probably see the light of day. If anybody will ever get their hands on it, it'd be Ray. You know what I mean? Like, I designed something, and ah, I'm not really sure, and I'll just set it aside. You know, right. like, you know, we're do doing Naughty and Nice for fall release with the Big Four, and I already have the frag design. Well, that frag started out as, I'm not sure, and now it's like, okay, now I'm going to do this, I'm going to use that, mix and i'm going to add some more oils to it to get to where i want to get with it you know what i mean but that does happen like you know like scott aromatico he's got zahara off decants that will never see the light of day that george sent him you know what i mean like it's all trial and error just like frank's saying right now from strike gold it's all trial and error and sometimes you win you win sometimes it just goes in the toilet and you call it a day you know and there's notes, Benjamin, that you think are amazing. You, oh, I want to get this. This will be really good. And you get it, and you smell it, and you're like, God damn, that smells like fucking puke. It's probably in my polo green. You know what I mean? So I just, that doesn't even make it. That doesn't even go on the, the fragrance organ. That just goes right back into the, right into the garbage. I won't even fuck around with it. Uh, Chris Bailey uh, is fond of talking about the three pillars of funk, and I think it's uh, oud, musk, and patchouli. And I, uh, one of these days, I want to do a soap called the Three Pillars of Funk, and it needs to have oud, musk, and patchouli in it, and try to like make it work because that that would be hilarious. <laughs> uh, uh, well, the one blade shaver got a question. Yeah. It says, what's the what? most important thing you do for in a soap set? Base quality, scent, label art, etc. Uh, Ruby's got the questions. Yeah, brother. Uh, scent, far and away. The most important thing I, yeah. for me when I buy a soap is uh, scent. A, a distant second is label art. Uh, let me grab another one that okay. I have been really surprised with lately. This one is Apogee from Declaration Grooming. Yeah. This is an original scent that I didn't think I would like. This is all salt, neroli, and cannabis, and it's, it's really rough around the edges. It's good, though. Uh, but the this one, the, the label, is what sold me. Right. And uh, I, I did a sample video that, that hasn't come out yet where I did the sample of this in a video and I was just like, dang, the scent on this is just amazing. I got to pick this up. So scent first, the label is usually second. Um, soap base, I mostly don't care about. Uh, there are, to me, probably five or six soap bases that stick out to me as wildly better than most. But for the most part, soap is soap. Like, yeah. artisans are not making bad soaps. They're just not. Uh, yeah. you know, That's so, why we're calling it luxury shaving, because, I mean, come on, it's luxurious. <laughs> Look what we get to use, you know? It's amazing. There's not a bad base out there. I like them all. You know what I mean? Like, Even even just the glycerin soaps. I mean, like, yeah. a really good glycerin soap, you're going to still get a great shave. Um. Wet shaving store. What is what is your favorite all time frag? Uh, my favorite all time frag is Tom Ford Ombre leather. Ooh, that's a great that's a good one. one. And you got uh, that in a Murphy McNeil, correct? Soap. 
No, but I do have a sample of uh, do a review on it's uh, Angora Soaps uh, High Roller, and that's uh, Tom Ford Ombre Leather. I haven't heard of that. I haven't heard of that one. Are they? Uh, is that a? I'm sorry. What was, was the brand? brand? Angora Soaps. Angora. Where are they out of? Virginia. Virginia. All right, Ray. We got to note that and bring them on. Like, yeah. like finding those new soap makers. Especially if it's good. Yeah. You know, like, and uh, one thing about them, for those who are curious, they do free shipping for anybody who's got an APO address. So if you're military, like this guy right here, that's that's a good good thing. So well, that's awesome. Uh, Hell yeah. Another. Yeah, um, that's awesome. I agree with you when I cut through a mic. I like post shape. I do. And you get some good post shave even with glycerin soaps, just depending on which one you're using. Well, you I mean, people, you, people now use like aftershaves and then now aftershave bombs. But yeah. almost, the, po the post shave from the soap itself is almost <laughs> negated depending on what products you're using after the shave. True. Because yeah, if you're, you're going to put alum on, alum is going to remove pretty much all that post shave feeling you got anyway because it's going to dry everything out. Very, and then very you just, true. Right, like I, um, me personally, when I'm gauging how much I like a soap base, there are two things and two things only that are important to me. Primary slickness and ease of use. Uh, yeah. Because if it's not slick on the first pass, like, then what are you doing here? So, and then ease of use. How easy is it to make a lather? Because if, if it's a pain in the ass for me to make a lather with your soap, I'm not going to use it. Right. Yeah. So who's got time for and that? Then, and then yeah. post shave it doesn't really matter much to me because I like a good, good old fashioned alcohol shave. Like some of my favorite aftershaves are Floyd and Mirasol, especially the metal salt because it's got that herbaceous kind of scent and it's got alum in it. It's one of the few aftershaves left that has alum in it. Yeah. So uh, I think yeah. PAA was doing that for a while, but I think he got rid of it because I had an older version of CAD. And it had, it had uh, alum in the splash, but I don't know if he still does it. It was an older, it was an old bottle. I know we had it in, um, in uh, Shade Line MBD. Uh, the, the first soap, we had alum in the, I think it was in the splash. In the Obsession dupe, that O yeah. to Obsession, I think there was alum in the splash. <laughs> let's do, uh, let's give away some stuff and then we'll keep going after this. Okay, we got uh Uncle Jumbo Pomade from Strike Old Shaves. And we got a little contemporary travel brush. It's purple and white with uh, Strike Old Shaves 24 millimeter synthetic knot. These are great knots. Cool but looking. I really love those knots. Okay, we're going to do the Uncle Jumbo first. And the winner is Big Papa. Congratulations, bro. And, and going back to the question about the the fragrances and like the niche houses, I think because it's a niche house, there's like an there's like a already agreed upon sort of market price that that like the big companies will, will kind of go with. They know that they can charge that much because people are willing to pay it. If no one paid right. for it at at the two hundred and fifty dollar mark, then of course they'd have to lower the price. But they know, hey, we're parfums to Marley. We can sell us for three hundred dollars. And I mean, but if the fragrance is good and it lasts then it's, it's only you could say it's worth the price but that's the problem with creed aventus is people are like oh it's the the best scent ever but the performance from the actual creed aventus is is terrible and there's no consistency in the batches no so it's not. yeah so the, the clones are sometimes better than the than the actual and then, then who's going to pay 300 dollars for that but yeah well uh, very true real is, quick real quick i don't mean to interrupt you guys let me just announce the winner real for the brush Cape Cod, Red Shaving, you won this brush. Please reach out to me and give me your shipping information, and I'll get it out to you uh, tomorrow. If you get me tonight, and give me your shipping. I'm shipping out a bunch of stuff tomorrow. So get a hold of me, and I'll get you this brush. All right, gents, continue on. Sorry about that. Oh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. But, uh, but pe people will still buy Aventus just because of the name, just because of the bottle. You know, right. it's just like you have having name brand stuff. Like, ah, oh, it just makes you feel better for some people, you know? It's just – Got to have it. Looks nice well, in pictures. Pricing for fragrances is actually regional. A lot of people don't know this, but like uh, over here, uh, I was just at a mall 
out here in Adana in Turkey and uh, like Tom Ford fragrances, for example, cost way less over here than they do in the U S because it's based on how much they think that market is, is willing to pay mm -hmm. for it. So, uh, so if you go to somewhere like a discount or like fragrance X fragrance net, and you see a, uh, like a Tom Ford or a Creed and it's like way less than retail, that's legit. It's probably just from an Eastern European market and it's being sold outside of official channels. Yeah. They call it the gray market. That's, yeah. that's the, that's the, that's the term I've heard for it. The gray market, the gray market. That's exactly and, right. And, and uh, I have a small fragrance collection. That's like probably 30 of them. And almost all of them I got from fragrance X or fragrance net. And I paid way, way less for uh, right. <clears throat> for high quality fragrances than I did like just buying them. And then like, like uh, the Tom Ford ombre leather, I actually got that at the base exchange mm. in the three point, the three point four ounce one. I got it for under a hundred bucks, which I, is yeah. crazy low. I ordered it from the, uh, the exchange website. Oh, it's probably like a similar deal. I was like, Oh wait, sure. I'll buy it. Yeah. You get, you get fucking military exchange. You get cheap, cheap. I remember yes. I go with my uncle in Hawaii to the bases and we go to the exchange and my God, you know what I mean? Like cheap, cheap. So yeah, how, how it's not cheap quality. On? It's not cheap quality, just in price. That's all. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's like some of the middle Eastern fragrances. Like, they they make their fragrances are super potent because of, I guess the the heat and the 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 temperature where they where they wear it. But like some of those fragrances are and the performance is like insane. Oh, like, you're you're not kidding. I, I got my hands on Arabian's Oud Rasala. Mm. Oh my god, that stuff is rich. It is so strong. Yeah, it's very very potent. Yeah, and they make, and then some some of the the clones they make are just like uh, insane. It's just like, oh wow, holy shit! Ray, what's that one that comes from Dubai and it's in the black bottle with the gold Arabic writing all over it? It's like a is it oud? Probably. I was just because I've seen like one past Ben had it. Um, a couple of the guys from the Canadian Mafia had it. I just can't remember what it was. It's a black bottle with all this gold writing all over it. And it's not super expensive at all. Uh, a lot of the oud fragrances that are coming out of the Middle East are what they call Arabian ouds. So it's like oud, rose, saffron. Like you always see that, that trifecta in a lot of Middle Eastern oud fragrances. I bet that's amazing. Uh, it's, it's an amazing combo. It really is. Okay, well, I just got a new idea. Thanks, Ben. I'm going to have to try that here just to check it out because that just sounds fucking right up my alley. Um, uh, Oud Rose Saffron is, is crazy. Yeah, because you, you get, get a, a little leather note, a little spice from the saffron. You get the rose and then that woody uh, Oud. That's just a combo made in heaven. Yep. Um, you got a question here from the Enabled Shaver. Ben, any antique shops over there in Turkey you can check out for some possible vintage shave gear? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. I'm actually going to answer uh, that question and then a hypothetical that I'm sure some people are thinking. Uh, number one. Uh, uh, that's the, the call. That's the one. Sorry. Go ahead. Antique shops here in Turkey are not like they are in the U.S. It's going to be kind of a uh, – they're very small and often – It's hard to say, honestly, because a lot of the places I've been, uh, people use their old stuff here. They don't just uh, sell it or leave it laying around and it ends up in an antique shop. So, like, I've lot, like the amount of older cars that I've seen that are still in good shape off base is, for just for example, is, is crazy. So... Um, the, the few antique shops that I've been in didn't have much because a lot of, because people retain that stuff. They don't, they don't tend to, uh, put it on the open market quite as much as we do in the U S another thing that I noticed is that, uh, like Turkey obviously has Arco and Derby and I'm sure there's another one I'm not thinking of, but for the most part, the the Turks they they shave with Gillette Foamy and a Mach three. 
uh, yeah. just like most Americans do. They, they're, as far as I can tell, there are not very many more traditional shavers in Turkey than there are in the U.S. Like a lot of people, when I came over here, they're like, oh, you're going to have to you know, find some Turkish shaving soaps and razors and stuff that we can't get in the u.s well you can get everything in the u.s like you you've discovered it there's not you're not missing much over here well there's there's some fragrances that we don't like some flankers that just don't come out into american uh markets for so for whatever reason like some of the stronger with you fragrances like you can't get here you can get them in canada um yeah. and then there's they have some that are specifically market for the arabian like I know there's like a stronger with you oud, which was just designed for the Middle Eastern market, which right. you can get through Canada, but can't really get here. I think that might be because of the EPA, you know, the the regulation on how much they're putting in a fragrance. Because if it's being designed for a Eastern market, like Ben said, it's super strong. And Canada doesn't, I don't think they have that limitation like we do. Maybe that's it. Well, I mean, I'm just guesstimating. Well, you can get uh, Stronger with You Oud, like, on the gray market. No problem at all. But, like, it's interesting that you mentioned Stronger with You because I was out at a mall uh, last week looking at fragrances. And what did I find? Whole shelves of Stronger with You. And Stronger with You Oud was one of them. They also have just, a leather one, out, too. Yeah. Just like out like, at a, go ahead. That's awesome. There's also, yeah, there's a Stronger with You Leather, I think, it was also designed for that market, too. <clears throat> It's just, it's, I try them out. Yeah, I love Stronger with you. And Stronger with you intensely, I think, is my favorite. It's 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 the the best balance of sweet and gourmand. Yeah. So, okay. uh, wh are you able to ship fragrances from where you're at to to the states, or is it because of the alcohol content you probably can't? So, uh, in order for me to bring fragrances back to the states, I would have to take them with me on a plane in my luggage. Mm. I. Uh, <clears throat> I cannot have um, aftershaves or fragrances shipped over here. Um, I'm not saying that some people might have uh, innocently forgot to put it on the customs form. I'm not saying that people do that, but for the most part, uh, no, I, I would have to take it with me physically uh, mm. going back and forth. Uh, Andy over at the wet shaving store wants to know your favorite razor, Ben. My all-time favorite razor is the Lupo 72. The one you didn't bring. The one I didn't bring by, by a wild margin. And it's like, I, again, I am kicking myself. I'm going to have to have my wife. She's sending me a box anyway. I'm going to have to have her grab it and just put it in the box. Just um, ask for the, ask for the soap thing. I need that soap thing. Looks like this. <laughs> No. Uh, well, well, gang, we're coming to the end of our hour. Uh, let's uh, do the frag out. But before we get started, I want to make a couple, one couple more announcements. Uh, keep an eye out. Uh, Banaka and One Sharp Sally is coming out with Strike Old Shaves in their first soap set. Very excited for those ladies to have their own soap. It's going to be the first woman's soap set. Um, I'm doing brushes, and so is... Um, Turning by Tans. We're both doing a couple of brushes. And then uh, and also... you have the uh, designer brush on the wet shaving store. Yeah. The designer brush. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, oh, yeah, and also you can go to the wet shaving store. If you want to access a uh, hand tie BB1 knot, the only way you can even get that is you go to the wet shaving store and you do a custom order Smiles for Miles brush. You get to pick five colors. You get to pick coin or no coin, and you get to pick your knot. You can a couple synthetics and a BB1 hand tied knot. Also, um, is there is there a work? shape thing too? Do you get to choose your uh, shape? Uh, yeah, you get to pick one of three shapes: a keyhole, Jefferson, or what was the other one? I can't remember. It's on the web store, but it's a keyhole with Jefferson, and there's another one on there that you can get. Um, also, we're working on M, so keep an eye out for that as well. Ray, you got any announcements before we do the frag out and call it an evening? Uh, Mid-September, Life and Death from First Line Shave should be coming out. Um, the, the fragrance is based on, it's called The Chronic, which 
doesn't it sounds like it would have a uh, marijuana in it but no it does not it doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah, no, it doesn't. Say that. that's the first thing i thought the chronic, that's the first the thing i thought have, the chronic has no weed in it no at all not even not even a little but uh the, you look at the note breakdowns on for granted it looks like a pretty good one get your candles from ray he does amazing uh wax melts and candles also is kim's dropping soon too Never Alone 2, isn't that coming out soon? I believe so. Okay, keep an eye out for that. Never Alone 2 coming out soon. Um, and I, also, I, ordered, I ordered some fall fragrances to start fall candles already because summer's basically almost over. Yeah, yeah. That's what going to be fun. Sen- what kind of scent uh, are you doing for fall? Uh, one's, called, one's an Autumn Delight sort of uh, sweet spice fragrance, and the other one is apples and pine burrows or pine bow those i'm gonna have to get my hands on some of that yeah that yeah, sounds the, good. The autumn delight is like even even when the candle's not lit it's like from the sample i had before it's just you can just smell it it's just it's so strong it, it diffuses really easily and it just fills up the room yeah even if even if it's not lit just i have one sitting on my shelf i'm like man what does that smell yeah i love when that happens yeah, uh, uh, like, right? well, that's the thing with candle making, like, you know, talk about going through product to make stuff because you have to do wick testing. So a lot of the things like you'll make a candle and a lot of them you get just they don't work. So you end up throwing out a lot of stuff, but it's it's part of the process. Trial and error, for sure. Yeah, and then yeah. some fragrances like it'll smell great from the bottle and you put it in and it either doesn't throw or it doesn't smell the same. And it's like, all right, well, throw, toss that one. Yeah. Also, guys, go check out Shave Dad. If you haven't joined Shave Dad on Facebook, go check them out. Join Shave Dad. Um, we got a worldwide giveaway going on over there, so uh, make sure you hit that up. It's all being uh, sponsored by the Wet Shaving Store as far as the giveaway is concerned. It's worldwide and, shipping. And he, they just reached over 1,000 members. Yes, it did. Stoked. Awesome. Also, you can still pick up L. There's only three bottles left. Don't sleep. Don't hesitate. Don't let your friends influence your decision making because you're going to blow it. This is a really great fragrance. Um, I guess that's it. Should we do All our right. frag out? I have from Sensual Obsessions. It's a it's Andy Warhol. Ooh, I love it's that a, fragrance. It's uh, it was it was a Bond number no. nine fragrance. It's been discontinued. Okay, Andy Warhol. Yeah. What are so, you doing, Ben? Well, I'm not trying to get crazy, so I think I'll probably just do some uh, Tom Ford Beau de Jour. I I just heard I just saw that fragrance on Sephora. It sounds like it's sort of like a barbershop type fragrance. It's an aromatic fougere, a very '90s aromatic fougere. It's got that that peppery lavender, and there's some. It drives down into this kind of mm. lavender sweetness. It's um, it's got some. There's no citrus like on paper, but you can definitely pick up some like citrus in the opening. It's mature, but oh, holy crap, it's a high quality scent. So yeah. You'd be well served if you picked up a small bottle of it. Yeah, I and then if, to, if, uh, if, if looks are out tonight. And if you like the ombre leather, uh, Cremo makes suede leather in their That's like soap one. and shampoo, and it's 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 a pretty good complement to the ombre leather fragrance. Every time I go to the store, I'm like, I I don't need more don't need more shower gel. I don't need no, more shower gel. I'm like, oh, then that's the next one. It's yeah, suede le- suede leather. And if you like lavender, the lavender in here is a real lavender from the province of France, and it's a banger. It goes all the way through. All right, let's do four for everybody here. Of course, we'll do one for Mel, Millie Mel, and uh, yeah. <coughs> I like the Tom Ford Fougere, Ben. That's a real great one too. Ooh, we four is too much. Like. Ooh, I well, hope, I hope especially that for that one you're using there, and you got that there. That's super strong in comparison to the U.S. market. Mm. And another uh, uh, Tom Ford I wanted to check out was uh, Noir Extreme. I just I heard that one's pretty good. I haven't got my nose on it yet. I heard that there's was another. Too. There's another one in their signature collection. I think it's Costa Azura. Yeah, I think someone. Got, I think there's a clone of that one in the Shave World. But it got uh, it got demoted from the private blend down to the signature collection, and so if I'm going to pick up another one, that'll probably be it. That and black orchid. Black orchid is a very interesting scent. 
black orchids awesome i love that stuff it's like it's it's it doesn't smell like anything else which is it, it's it's hard to find fragrances that do that you're like this doesn't smell like anything i've ever smelled before yeah thank you carlos and ruben for your compliments on elixir l that's what i like about elixir m Ray, is because it doesn't smell like anything else that i have in my collection there's nothing there that matches you know i, I actually hate when i buy a fragrance and i'm like this smells just like this one i already own yeah, nice. I hate when that happens too, especially if it smells like a fucking polo green. Mm. Or like a blue fragrance, which we have a thousand of on the market now. They sell. Polo green, I hate it. It just smells like nice. puke on me, so I'm just going to keep bitching about that the rest of my life. Well, gang, thanks a lot for everything. I appreciate your time, Benjamin, for taking your time out of your day. I, uh, I'm sure you're going to have a, a day ahead of you now because it's just starting. Ray, what I appreciate you there. Being- yeah, it's uh, 0500 by, by now. Yeah, 0500. Yeah, time for time for PT. Yeah, yeah, absolutely time for PT. <laughs> yeah, peace well, be the dream, brothers and sisters, and we'll see you in two weeks. We're taking next weekend off for Labor Day weekend, and then we'll we work hard. There. What's that? Because we work so hard. Because we work hard. But we want to have fun with our friends and family too, just like everybody else. And remember, bus sides, and I love you from right here, and we'll check you sooner than later. Take care. Thanks, for having Thanks me. guys. Thanks, Ben.